afternoon para sa, para sa lahat. Uh, I hope everyone is okay. So you're doing well uh, in spite of this COVID. So sana okay naman lahat, di ba? So again, this is a good way, di ba? To learn because kahit nasa bahay tayo or maybe some of you are already working. But uh, still, we have this webinar set up by Pinoy Builders na matuto tayo, di ba? And uh, again, uh, this is, uh, we will be talking about uh, cement basics and concrete, uh, okay? So I know most of you are already familiar with cement. Siguro dito marami ng mga experts, okay? They say that. At saka uh, we are also happy na may mga young professionals din, mga bata, which is a good way, it's a good medium para po matuto tayo. At the same time, madagdagan po yung mga kalaman natin. At we are hoping na at least at the end of the sessions, uh, we'll be able to learn something. Okay? So basically, my presentation will be a bit short. I will be only talking about 45 minutes. Uh, but we will try to understand uh, cement more. And hopefully, this will lead to new discoveries and information that would be beneficial somehow to your profession. Okay, so this will be the our scope of our webinar. So basically, what is cement? Uh, how is cement made? Uh, the re reaction of cement with water. And we will focus on uh, these two types of cement. This is the Portland cement and the blended cement. So uh, along the way, if you have some questions, we have uh, actually a live Q&A uh, manned by Engineer Mike Castro. He will also answer your questions. And we will also pick some of those questions and answers, and we will discuss it also later. Okay, so again, we will try to look back first on the history of cement. So basically, uh, years ago, so maybe 2,000 years ago, uh, they already uh, used cement uh, for construction use, like uh, the Egyptians used calcine gypsum, gypsum okay? Uh, Greeks and Romans also uh, used lime made by heating limestone. So, may, may mga idea na rin sila kung paano gumawa ng mga uh, building material, okay? So, Greeks and Romans also, on the other hand, uh, used lime made by heating limestone, okay? And the Romans also discovered that by adding crushed volcanic ash to lime, they can now build structures underwater. So, ito yung gamit nila to build harbors or other retaining structures, di ba? So, maybe some of us here or some of you here are architects. So, maybe you are familiar with this book, uh, The Ten Books of Architecture. So, it was written by a Roman author. So, he's uh, popularly known as Vitruvius. So, Vit Vitruvius, by the way, is a first century architect and civil engineer. So, so parang doon, no, internally, wala siyang conflict between an architect and a civil engineer. So, ganun siya katalented, di ba? So, in his book, actually, he already mentioned about this kind of powder that when added with lime and rubble, not only lends strength to buildings, but can also set harder to, or can also set harder, hard underwater, okay? So, basically, he's already describing cement as early as before the common era. And that's about 2,000 years ago. So imagine ganon siya katagal. But it took uh, not until 1824 when Joseph Asdin was granted patent for cement. Okay? So before, yung process nila to gumawa ng cemento is to by through firing or burning a mixture of lime and clay. So basically, yun lang. Kapasimte ng ano nila. And uh, additional input lang po, si Joseph Astin pala, uh, he called it uh, Portland cement because of its resemblance to Portland stone. Uh, Portland stone, by the way, during that time, it is the most widely used uh, building material in England. Okay, so his son also, William, uh, also helped develop the modern cement production, which we are now using today, di ba? It's using high temperature. Okay, so as uh, Speaking of uh, modern cement production, so we have here the development of rotary kilns, uh, the addition of gypsum, and the use of ball mills. So basically, if you're familiar with cement production, 
So, you, uh, you, ito yung pinaka uh, area ng plant na medyo mainit, uh, sobrang init talaga. Because uh, we are burning materials here up to 1,400 degrees Celsius. So, yung rotary kilns, uh, its main purpose is to produce our Portland clinker. Uh, by heating or burning these raw materials, uh, yun nga, up to 1,400 degrees Celsius. So, imagine po kung gano'n siya kainit. So, and at, on the other hand, they've already, they've also realized that by adding gypsum, they can control the setting type of cement. So, imagine po kung gano'n siya ka-importante because uh, wala tayong gypsum, if we add cement, or add water to the cement, so parang it quickly hardens, di ba? So parang wala na tayong time to to set it properly or to place it properly. But we have also systems now in, into place that, that are put into place uh, to aid the addition of gypsum, uh, making it more efficient and accurate. Okay. So of course, we use also ball mills. So if you're familiar with the ball mills, so it is used for the grinding of cement, okay? It also ensures that the right fineness, kung gaano katino yung cemento natin, kung tama ba, and consistency of our cement is attained. What is cement? So, we all know that cement is a fine gray powder substance that, are, that when added with water, it re, or when it reacts with water to form a kind of binder. So, again, remember that yung cement talaga is just the binder. If we are consider, considering uh, concrete na, di ba, may aggregates, you have uh, water, and the main purpose of the uh, cement is only to bind these materials to make it stronger. So yung cemento po, pag nilagyan natin ng water, it will become paste. Pag nilagyan na naman natin ng, dagdagan natin ng fine aggregates like sand, it will now become a mortar. Okay? And when, it, it will, when we add aggregates, dun sa mortar na yun, it will form a rock-like material that is called concrete. Yan, di ba? And that concrete, we can now use, use it to build structures like buildings, bridges, and roads. So, just imagine po the importance of cement because we cannot create this di ba, amazing, massive structures, concrete structures uh, if cement was not invented. Okay, so our next slide is, uh, we see here the most, uh, the common modern day uses of cement. Uh, again, as we, as again, mortar is used mostly on masonry works, like creating a masonry wall, plastering, and other architectural finishes, or mainly for non-structural applications. But there are also times or that, we use high strength mortar, diba? So, may mga projects din na kailangan ng high strength mortar or even high strength base. But most of the time, we use concrete uh, to use in structural applications uh, where higher strength is a requirement. Okay, so that's why uh, on infrastructure projects uh, like constructing a building, we use concrete. Uh, and also, we use cement to create products such as concrete hollow blocks, RC pipes, and cement boards. Okay, so now we go to how is cement is produced. Okay, so again, this is a good way to at least be familiarized kung paano yung production ng cemento. So basically, we have two very important steps. So very easy. So we, all we did is to produce a material, material called clinker. Okay, so from that clinker, we can now produce the finished product, which is cement. Okay? So, to produce clinker, majority of its components would be lime and silica. And by burning or heating these materials, we will be able to produce our clinker. But in order to produce a less expensive clinker, we add alumina and iron correctives. For a more efficient cooking of raw materials, so we can lower its temperature, thus reducing the energy use. So basically, it's just a correction para mas bagig uminit yung, ano, yung burning ng raw mats natin. At the same time, uh, we lower carbon dioxide uh, emission as lesser coal will now be used for burning. Uh, since greenhouse gas is emitted from coal burning as fuel, 
in through heating of limestone. So there are two ways here to where we get carbon dioxide in in producing cement, diba? We have the coal burning uh, through as, as fuel to burn these raw materials. And at the same time, there's this uh, chemical reaction uh, when we are, we are heating limestone. Okay. So it is important that we did also to optimize our concrete mix because if we can use a lesser cement yet, we can still get our desired strength uh, that will uh, big help diba? to reduce carbon or CO2 emissions. Okay, so now with your clinker, we take a look on the compounds that influence the properties of cement. So we have the C3S. Uh, C3S is responsible for the early strength and heat of hydration of our cement. So, and C2S demand is for the late strength. And we have C3A for the setting time. And C4AF is basically will just affect the color of our cement but will not determine the quality of our product. Okay, so our next step would be to produce cement using the clinker. Okay, so ito yung medyo parang critical, di ba? Kung paano na, uh, i-ano natin yung paano yung produce yung clinker. So again, but before, but before that, uh, if for us to make our OPC or ordinary Portland cement, we just need to add that clinker with gypsum. Again, remember, di ba? Yung, yung gypsum natin is for uh, set retarder, di ba? Para i-control yung setting time ng cement. Because kung clinker lang, dagdagan natin yung tubig, so titigas talaga yan siya. Okay, then we grind this, the clinker and the gypsum, now meron na tayong Portland cement. Okay, so actually remember the OPC, tawag sa kanya, type 1 OPC, because it's ordinary Portland cement, di ba? Parang nothing special. And, and for us to make a blended cement, ito, special na to, kasi blended na eh. So we have clinker plus gypsum plus mineral component. So meron tayong pwedeng dagdag, magdagdag ng uh, fly ash, pozzolan, and ano pa? Slug, okay, di ba? And this is added mostly during grinding. Uh, to produce our uh, blended cement. And remember, so by substituting, sorry, okay, so by substituting a portion of the clinker with mineral components, we are also able to reduce CO2 emission per bag of cement, di ba? Remember that every time gagawa tayo ng clinker, we are emitting carbon dioxide. So if we can reduce clinker in our cement, that's better, di ba? We can, we are preserving our, our nature. Okay. So basically, this is our guide to produce our, our cement. Okay. So again, it is important to note, okay, uh, that we have, okay, uh, here, you can see here the oxides, okay. Uh, we have cal uh, calcium, silica, alumina and iron and and we can also and here also is the the sources kung saan po makikita tong mga oxides na to so basically uh, cal calcium will be found in a limestone and silica will be found in sand alumina in clay and of course iron will be in the iron oxide so so again when this when these oxides or when this uh, raw materials will be subjected to high temperatures, these oxides will transform into four different clinker. Okay, sorry. The four different, four important components. Okay, so these are the C3S. C3S for generally is for the early strength. Uh, C2S for late strength, as I mentioned earlier. So it is important to uh, remember that before we design our cement, it is uh, good also that we have to know the market requirement of our uh, uh, the market requirement, diba? Kung anong type of cement yung, ga yung gagawin natin, either an early strength cement, a late strength cement, diba? So it depends. And after that, uh, if we already know the market, so we also have to design our clinker. 
kung ano what type of clinker that we want. Then the next step is to to look for these raw materials that would beat our clinker specifications. Okay? So to appreciate more the process flow for Portland cement, okay? So we have these steps. Okay, first step is we just need to extract raw materials. Then then we have to proportion, grind and homogenize into the CF silo or uh, control flow silo. Then these materials will be preheated before it will pass through the rotary kiln, diba? Then where it will be heated up to 1450 degrees Celsius. Okay. So if you notice in this stage, as I mentioned earlier, most of the CO2 emissions will take place here, diba? Because of yun nga, because we we need coal to burn or to achieve the required height, uh, required heat. And from that chemical effect also caused by the heating of limestone, limestone with calcining. So we have two sources here of CO2 emissions, the coal burning and the calcining. Then after that, we, can, we have now our clinker. Then a sec, next step would be our clinker will be added with gypsum. Then we'll pass through the cement mill for grinding. So yan, ganyan na, ganyan na kasimple. Paano gumawa ng Portland cement? Okay, so next step is to create or to produce our blended cement. So again, the, the first steps, the first step is the same. Uh, we just we just need to create our clinker. Then the difference naman dito sa step two is we just need to add yung mix, tinatawag natin mix, or the mineral components such as slag, like as mentioned earlier. Then it will pass through cement mill. And we have now our blended cement. Okay, so maybe I skip the step two here. So OPC, uh, same process, the gypsum clinker, uh, then the cement mill in the OPC. We, we have now our OPC. Then for the blended cement, we just need to add the mineral components. Okay. So, so this is the, ito yung pang, parang ano, uh, uh, basic or the most common plant, diba? Yung parang cement, kung ano yung itsura ng cement plant. So, if you can see here, uh, this is the quarry site. Okay. So, uh, if you, if you, ano, parang ma, if you realize that uh, most of these cement plants are, are constructed, diba? Where the, yung abundance of raw materials are present. So, especially yung kumaraming mga limestone ng area, di ba? Okay? So, after this one, we have this the semi clinker production. Okay? Uh, after the we quarry first using the equipment, then stockpile, then we produce our clinker. Okay? So, through the cement kilns, then we, now, we have now our clinker. Then after producing our clinker, we have our uh, cement mill where we add gypsum or if we we need uh, or we want to build or to produce a blended cement, we'll just add the uh, blend materials here. Then after that, we have it's ready now for dispatch and ready for use. Okay. Okay, next is the... Sorry, sorry. Okay, so we will look now to the science behind the uh, cement hardening, di ba? Or when, how our, our cement hydrates. So if you remember, and if you can recall, that these are the clink, that there are clinker compounds, or the clinker compounds generally influence the properties of cement, di ba? Uh, As stated, the result of hydration or reaction of cement with water is dictated mainly by the reaction of these compounds when mixed with water. So it is safe not to include C4AF, di ba? So meron tayo C3S, C2S, C3A. Yung C4AF, uh, pwede natin siyang ibaliwala since its reaction with water has no significant effect on the cement properties. So, okay. So next is, we will look into the how Portland cement reacts with water. So we have here the, as again, 
you can see the C3S and C2S. So, kung may tubig na siya, uh, it will form into CSH. Okay? And that CSH is actually, is our, it's like the strength of our cement paste. Siya yung parang titigas. But, the, but of course, kasi dinagdagan natin ng H2O, um, it will also produce a byproduct uh, which is called uh, calcium hydroxide. So, the problem with CH is that it will stay in our concrete and dissolves in water which causes porosity. So, medyo in the long term, so meron ano din siya, parang may uh, medyo harmful din siya sa concrete natin, di ba? And remember also that during production, we already added gypsum uh, to, of course, to retard the, the setting time of our cement. And uh, well, the only concern there would be uh, our gypsum will also react with the, the calcium here in the C3A and will form into an, an etringite, okay? So, uh, the problem with etringite is uh, it, because it is an expansive product that eventually it, it is also harmful to our concrete. Okay, so next is the uh, how to or how a blended cement also reacts with water. Okay, so but the but if you can see here, we will we actually will appreciate uh, blended cement more because of the addition of mineral components or mix, diba? such as fly ash or pozzolans, which have additional silica content. Diba? Kita niyo itong letter S, that's silica. So, yung byproduct natin kanina, which is CH, it will form again into another CSH. So, eventually, it will also be an additional strength to our concrete. Then, again, but this additional this additional reaction makes uh, blended cement uh, continue to gain more strength uh, over time, okay? But again, uh, the, but though the additional reaction does not come overnight, uh, blended cement is still a good option because, uh, again, it continues to gain more strength over time. And the important thing is it also uh, helps il eliminate the CH here because yeah, it already react or it will re react with our silica okay so again blended cement is not only sustainable because alre again we already reduce the our clinker here we substitute it with mineral uh, components uh, it would also make our concrete durable so medyo mas matibay yung concrete natin di ba pag merong meron tayong dinadagdag na silica so, siguro, eh, kayo, may mga projects kayo. Eh. I know, di ba? Mayroong mga massive structures or other uh, structures na nasa re or water-retaining structures, di ba? So, some specifiers, designers would say that uh, we will add silica or fly ash uh, to, lower, low, to lower the heat or to make the concrete durable. So, actually, parang ginawa nating uh, blended cement yung type 1 OPC natin, di ba? Yung type 1 OPC plus fly ash or silica fume, di ba? So parang ginaw, ginaw, ginawa na rin natin siyang blended cement. Okay, so this slide, actually it will only tell us the ano yung reaction or uh, what is the difference if uh, we have less water in the mix and uh, the other has more, okay? So remember, when cement hydrates with water, Okay, as you can see, uh, ito parang siyang mag-e-expand after nagsa-start na siyang mag-set. Actually, it's not like, uh, parang it's, they call it a chemical and physico-mechanical change that occurs during hydration. So, uh, with fewer water, cement particles can easily bond together compared to having more water in the mix. So, mas madali silang mag-bond kasi eh, medyo malapit-lapit lang sila kaysa kung marami tubig, Diba? Magkahiwalay-hiwalay. So, okay? So, setting time would be much faster or ideal. And strength is expected to be higher, uh, assuming that the other proportions, of course, of the materials uh, in the concrete mix are the same. So, so it's really important uh, for us to check our cement water ratio, uh, especially in concrete, 
uh, because most of the defects, uh, concrete defects, are, are caused by overwater, di ba? So, minsan, nagkakaproblema tayo when mara maraming nagdagdag na tubig. Okay. So, our next topic would be the types of cement. So, basically, these are the, these are the types of Portland cement. So, we have the type 1 here. Okay. Uh, for Portland cement, we have type 1, uh, type 2, type 3, type 4, and type 5. And for blended cement, we have 1P, P, 1P, and 1L. So, these specifications actually is based on the PNS. So, actually, parang na-release na to, 63 of 2018. So, these are mga bago na to, like 1T and 1L. So, basically, uh, masonry cement also is also part of our standards. It's also part of BNS, but for the next slides, we will only focus more on the uh, Portland cement and blended cements. So again, we are we are advocating uh, type one P or blended or uh, sorry blended cement because uh, of its uh, sustainability and and it's an eco friendly product as we say it. Okay, so but before that, uh, I will proceed first with the types of Portland cement. Okay. So again, as you can remember, uh, we we need to design first the specification specifications for Kinker for us to produce different types of Portland cement. Diba? It means that we cannot use a type 1 clinker to a type 2 cement or vice versa. And same goes through to other types of cement diba? because every type of cement has to be designed to a specific clinker. Uh, this is spe specifically true, di ba, for Portland cement. So again, here are the types of Portland cement. So type 1 is most widely used for general construction because of its fairly high C3S. It's good for a high early strength. And uh, it is most usually, or it is mostly used in buildings, uh, roads and bridges. And while type 2 is for moderate sulfate resistance, where C3A is lower than 8%, okay? This cement is recommended for structures exposed to soil or water containing sulfate ion. So, minsan ito yung, di ba, if you have projects, especially in, uh, in palang uh, submerged in uh, soil or water, ito yung parang, uh, parang minsan automatic na sinasabi ng designer that you use type 2 cement. Type 2 or type 4 cement. Okay. So, we have also here the type 3, which is generally for high early strength. Uh, this cement is usually finer and has slightly higher C3S. Okay? It is used widely on rapid construction and cold weather concreting. Type 4 naman is for low heat of hydra hydration. The C3S is lower than 50% and C3A is also much lower compared to other types. So, the cement is recommended for massive structures like dumps. Because, of course, uh, yun nga, meron siyang low heat of hydration effect. Uh, ayaw natin, di ba, gagawa tayo ng malaking concrete structures because of the thermal cracks, eh, magka-crack yung uh, structure natin. Okay, so we have type 5 also. Uh, is for high sulfate resistance. c content here is very low, so less than 5%, so napakababa. And this is for structures exposed to high levels of sulfate ions. So again, if we go back to cement production, diba? you notice that C3S, C2S, and C3A are the components of clinker. So again, for us to produce different types of cement, uh, we also need to produce different types of clinker. And production and producing different types of clinker would that be ideal and costly in plant production, uh, especially if you have only one plant in your area and the demand is low, so that's why here in the country, because uh, we generally we use type 1 cement. Diba? And we seldom use to produce other cement types uh, because we focus more on producing type 1 cement. Okay, so these are the identifying marks of Portland cement in 40 bags or 40 kilogram bags. So ito lang, meron, meron lang siyang solid red band. So nakatatak lang or nakasulat sa harap yung what type is type 1 type 2 and so on okay 
Then, we go now for the types of blended cements. Again, uh, in production, uh, the only difference from blended cement to OPC is the addition of mineral components or blend materials. So, ito yung difference. Sorry. Okay. So, this is only the difference. We just add big here or the uh, blend materials uh, to produce our blended cement. Okay, so these are the most commonly used blend material for blended cement. So we have fly ash, which can be found from power plants as a byproduct of burning coal used as fuel. Uh, we have also natural pozzolans from nature and volcanic soil uh, slug by product of uh, smelting from iron. Okay, and limestone that can also be found in nature. Okay, so these are the types of blended cement based on the New PNS, 63 of 2018. Uh, okay, so type 1P is the most common blended cement available in the market. So, diba, halos talagang ito yung nakikita natin eh. And type P is also available in some regions in the country. But, and uh, diba, if you notice that these two are the most common uh, types of cement or blended cement in our country because we have uh, pozzolan and fly as fly ash sources in the country. So type 1S is not yet available because uh, we don't have AD or that enough slug to use, to use it as a blend material. And don't be surprised if soon our cement manufacturers will produce type 1L. Ito yung, because we are blessed to have uh, abundant supply of limestone all over the country. So if you notice that these cements are not sure are normally defined by the type of blend material they contain. Siguro, uh, with the exception of type 1P, uh, which indicates the number of blend material rather than the kind. So ternary, so it means tatlo. So tatlo yung halo niya, pwede siyang lime. Uh, may, may clinker tayo, lime, uh, pozzolan, diba? fly ash. Okay, or AD combinations. Okay, so these are the identifying marks uh, This is, uh, on 40 kilogram bags based on yung ano pa, old, you see three, uh, 63 of 2005, PNS 63 of 2005. So maybe there might be changes when the uh, new PNS uh, 63 of 2018 will be publicly released, okay? Again, so I will just... Here we can see the okay the some known properties of Portland and blended cement. Okay, we'll just try to uh, compare this two uh, two kind types of cement, the Portland and the gypsums. Okay, so again for Portland cement, majority of its contents is clinker, uh, and the remaining material is gypsum. So basically, parang clinker lang talaga siya. So for blended cement, as you can see here, uh, we we replace, we substitute actually uh, some clinker here, clinker here with a blend material or the some mineral components. So again, the percentages may vary uh, depending on the desired product or product performance of the cement manufacturer. So of course, manufacturers would also limit the addition of blend materials as it will affect the chemical and physical properties of your cement. And they have to ensure also that it meets the requirements of ASTM and PNS for blended cements. Okay, so next is we will compare the strengths. So, okay, we will compare the strengths. Uh, of course, if you notice, normally uh, using Portland cement, it would really give you a high early strength. But if you see in the graph, uh, blended cement has the ability to gain more strength over time and can even exceed Portland cement strength in the long run, okay? So that's the beauty of the blended cement. So if you remember CH here, uh, if you remember CH, okay, or the calcium hydroxide, it is the byproduct during cement hydration, which will react with the silica from the blend material. Uh, actually, it does not only add strength, but it will also make our concrete less porous, okay? But since Portland cement, on the other hand, has no additional blend material, the CH will dissolve and makes our concrete more porous because of continuous pores. So again, don't confuse this with cracks. Okay, these are not cracks. These are just pores. Parang ano lang siya. 
uh, actually parang hindi mo siya makikita eh. You cannot uh, visibly see it in your naked eye. So if our structure, again, is less porous and submerged in water or soil uh, with chemicals, it has a lesser chance of water or other chemicals to penetrate and cause deterioration of to our concrete. Diba? So yun, ito yun, yun yung mga reasons bakit minsan, even if we use type 1 cement, we will add other blend materials, like okay? as silica fume, and the like. Okay, so next is, we will try to look on the the heat generation produced by uh, Portland against a blended cement. So based on calorimetry test, blended cement is about 12 to 14 percent lower in heat compared to Portland cement. Okay, this is because we replace a portion of the clinker with blend material. So with less clinker, C3S is also less. Uh, naturally, uh, during hydration, it would also generate slower heat. So this is why, uh, especially in hot weather applications, advasive structures, lower heat of hydration, uh, hydration cement is more appropriate to lessen the chance of thermal cracks. Okay. So next is, okay, just to highlight the importance proper, uh, important properties of blended cement, okay? You should remember that the blend materials were not added just to reduce the clinker content of your cement. But more importantly, Importantly, it has a purpose. Uh, it has known properties properties that can improve concrete performance, and more importantly, it has low environmental impact. So its low early strength can be negated because it continues to gain strength over time and can even exceed Portland cements. And thermally induced cracks in concrete are unlikely to occur because it has lower heat of hydration. Okay. So durability increases as concrete permeabil permeability reduces. So it has a higher resistance to deteriorating effect of weather and chemical attack uh, for the environment because uh, we reduce the clinker, diba? By substituting uh, blend materials, we also lower CO2 emission. So as clinker production is the main producer of CO2 in cement manufacturing, we also reduce the energy energy use and conserve our natural resources. Okay. So again, this is just, uh, okay, we're just in a few slides. Malapit na tayo matapos. So again, we have these challenges in pushing uh, blended cement in the Philippines. Uh, okay. Uh, the Philippine market because there's always this perception that it's inferior compared to Portland cements. Diba? So normally, it is only used at small constructions and limited to small houses and houses houses and repairs but i'm happy nakita ko kanina diba parang more than uh, almost 50 percent of you are are using type 1 or uh, type 1p or blended cement so most of the time because uh, durability is not even considered considered on designs uh, if it may be considered but most probably the concrete design is not based on actual application or performance base uh, though using blended cement is more sustainable it is still a challenge on how to influence you, of course, the designers and constructors to use it. Uh, but if you see the photos below, di ba? Makikita natin, meron tayong tunnel, okay, uh, ports, na marami, di ba? May stadium pa. Actually, these are uh, Lafarge Solsim projects that use blended cement, di ba? So, uh, actually, blended cements are globally accepted and are already used in high-level projects for its durability and sustainability features. So, so I just hope, and it's my wish actually, diba? Uh, now, once this uh, pandemic ends, diba? Parang we will be more uh, inclined or environmentally aware by using uh, products that help conserve our natural resources. Uh, of course, without sacrificing the quality and integrity of our design structure. Okay, just to summarize our uh, lecture for the cement basics. Okay, so we have here a cement has a long history. Uh, it's still one of the best construction materials used in the industry. Manufacturing cement clinker generates CO2 gas, which is harmful to the environment, and several programs are initiated to reduce it. Uh, learning the different types of cement, Portland and blended, uh, gives the end user options for intended application and own objectives such as 
supporting sustainable construction. So, yun na yung aim natin para sustainable construction. So, it is good to revisit the properties of blended cement to promote sustainability uh, in construction due to reduced CO2 emissions. Okay? So, uh, in, construct, in constructing structures, okay, sorry, uh, the strength of cement is not the only feature. Okay, remember that. And, uh, hindi lang po strength, we also need durability. Uh, make sure natin natatagal yung structure natin, di ba? Uh, it is the resistance of the structure against weathering, chemical attacks, and other forms of deterioration over time must also be considered. So, of course, choice of cement type plays a key role, key role in this. Okay. So, I guess that ends my presentation. So, I hope you may natutunan po yung uh, tayo kahit uh, one or two lang which is tumatak din sa inyo. So again, thanks for joining me. So I'll be presenting the second part of this webinar, which is on concrete basics. So just like Engineer Bong, I will all, I also prepared a short poll activity, and I'll be sharing three poll questions, which you will see appear, that it will appear in your screens in between my slides. So you have also ten seconds to answer each poll. So let's begin. So this webinar scope includes on um, what is concrete, how is concrete made, what consider what to consider for quality of concrete, why do con problems occur in concrete, and the keys to producing quality concrete. So first, let's define what is concrete. So concrete, as per defined by Oxford Dictionary, is a heavy, rough building material made from a mixture of broken stone or gravel, sand, cement, and water that can be spread or poured into molds and forms a stone-like mass on hardening. So let us not be confused concrete with cement. So concrete is the world's oldest and number one most widely used construction material. Its use stage worldwide is twice that of the steel, plastic, aluminum, wood combined. So how has concrete reached this position? Um, mainly because it is made from common materials. These common materials are easily available in our local markets. Also, because of its low cost, it is, concrete is considered as the least expensive building material. So the technology is simple that anyone can learn how to make concrete. Uh, it is strong also in compression. So it's very good in withstanding enormous amounts of weight. So the, the strong compressive strength is attributed to, its, to how it is made. Concrete remains in semi-fluid state long enough to be delivered and placed within one hour in general. And because it is plastic in fresh state, it can be molded in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And lastly, it could be the most durable material from an environmental point of view. So it can last longer or decades of years compared to other building materials and gains strength over time. So because of these remarkable properties of concrete, uh, Concrete made construction of the tallest, heaviest, deepest structures possible. So, nothing provides greater support for this heavy structure than the layer of concrete. So, in theory, there are other um, building materials that can provide strong foundation. However, it is not as cost efficient as concrete. So let's take a look on the composition of concrete. So the primary composition of concrete, ito alam nyo na to. So meron tayong cement, gravel, sand, and water. If you have these four basic components and you mix this one, you already have a concrete. However, sometimes we use also admixtures and fiber reinforcements. 
So, get ready guys. Ito na yung ating uh, pinaka-first poll question. So, is cement equal to concrete? Correct answer is false po. Ang cement hindi pareho kay concrete. Dahil ang cemento po ay isang composition ng concrete. Yan. Ito, how will you call it? Cementadong daan po ba or kompretadong kalsada? So the correct way the correct way to say is kompretadong kalsada po ito. And this one, ito po ay isang concrete mixture truck not a cement mixer truck. Generally, there are two ways uh, to prepare concrete. Pwedeng manual or the ready mix batching plant. So, manual mixing, this is most popular in residential and small construction works. So, it is done through volumetric proportioning wherein you proportion the amount of uh, materials to the space or the volume it occupies. So, kadalasan makikita natin meron silang one cubic box or yung used pails ng mga paints. And uh, this is done manually or through one rubber mixer. If it's done manually, all the materials is laid in a flat surface and, there, and they create a volcano-like crater dito sa gitna and where they pour water and then they mix all the ingredients slowly. So, the water addition here is by fill. So, most of the time, we add more water to make the concrete more workable. So, since it's manual, seldom na merong mga testing. So, the quality is based more on experience. And this is done on site. So, the other way to produce concrete is the ready mix batching plant. So this is more precise and accurate. Good concrete is um, measured by weights or what we call the gravimetric proportioning. So all the water, the moisture from the aggregates is taken into account so that your concrete will not be too dry or too wet. There is a central mixer, this one, uh, that ensures that all the ingredients will be mixed thoroughly. And there's also, and this is a computerized batching with a controlled room. So meaning there is less human intervention. If there's less human intervention, there will, there will be less errors and less mistakes in the mixing process. So in ready mix batching plant also, uh, we conduct standard test for the quality monitoring and usually this is done on-site or off-site by the use of track mixers. So what to consider for quality of concrete? So the key for durable and strong concrete is um, rest to the careful proportioning of your materials. So this is an illustration of a common batch weight for a component of one cubic meter concrete with approximately 2,400 kilograms. So the big chunk here, almost 80% is the aggregate and 12% only is the cement. However, in cost, it is the cement that is more expensive. So this is the reason why cement is first to blame if there's a concrete failure but uh, we should also take a look on the aggregates because this occupy occupies the most volu volume in our concrete so meaning it has a greater impact on our concrete so the good quality of concrete starts with the quality of these components for the cement so it is important to select the right type of cement versus application. So a while ago, Engineer Bong discussed all the um, different types of cement. However, the most common one that we use in our construction site is the ordinary Portland cement, which is the type 1, the blended cement, the type 1B or the type S, 
OPC with moderate sulfate resistant, the type 2, and the masonry cement. And if you're using admix, you should con conduct cement admix compatibility. This is because the admixture reacts differently with different types and brands of cement. So it is best to talk to your supplier on, on its compatibility with the cement. And never use admix uh, if you have not tried it on trial mixes. Moreover, cement strength and other properties should be checked to meet the project specifications. So the role, role of cement in concrete, we know and discussed a while ago that this uh, cement is ar around 12% of volume of concrete. So when cement is mixed with water, it forms a phase. This phase acts as a binding agent or the glue of the concrete that bonds and holds the aggregates together as it hardens. So in this photo, these are the aggregates. So the cement paste fills up the voids in between these aggregates. So cement also contributes to major fresh properties of concrete, such as slump and setting time and reaction with admixtures. Um, note all, also that cement shrinks as it hardens. So excessive amount of cement in the mix will likely contribute to cracking. Um, this is an illustration of cement hydration. Uh, we've seen this a while ago in the presentation of Engineer Bob. So as in during mixing, this is the cement particles, but in reality, hindi, can, hindi bilog yung nasa microscope kung titignan natin. So just for this illustration lang. So the cement particles during, during mixing, na less yung water in the mix mo, um, mas closer sila sa isa, isa But when you have more water in the mix, they tend to move farther away from each other. So far, it looks like they're having social distancing also. So after some time, the nodes emerges as it gains strength and eventually it will look like this. So as you can see, there's a better bonding if the water is less in the mix because the cement particles are closer to each other than this one. So better bonding means better strength development. So as much as possible, we wanted less water in the mix to have higher strength. However, we need to balance workability and water additions so the concrete can still be efficiently poured and mixed. So other components of aggregate is the Concrete is the aggregate. So it occupies 60 to 80 percent of the concrete volume. So they are classified as porous or fine. So good quality of concrete must be clean, free of impurities, free of clay coatings, and contaminants like soil. The moisture content, size, grading, and shape are directly um, affecting the proper the performance of concrete. So the moisture content of aggregates affects the water cement ratio of the mix. So it can cause the concrete to be too dry by absorbing the water or too wet by contributing water to the mix. So it is best to regularly monitor your moisture content, and adjust it, adjust your water in your concrete mix. So aggregate sh should also be well graded. So if you have single sized or poorly graded aggregates, you'll end up with a mix that is hard to work and difficult to place. So if that's the case, to balance this out, you add 
cement paste or you add water in your mix which will eventually lead to shrinkage. So, ayaw din natin yun. So, well-graded uh, well graded aggregates is best sa concrete mix because it's lesser in void. So, if it's lesser in void, lesser din yung cement paste na gagamitin natin. If it's reduced in paste, um, it will reduce also in cost, temperature rise, shrinkage, and permeability. So, aggregates should also be well shaped. Itong flaky and elongated should be avoided because it's easily can easily break and it's harder to pump. Where else, kung angular and rounded yung gamit natin, it means that it's high in workability and it's more easier to pump and compact. So, in fresh concrete state, aggregates provide a relatively cheap filler and hence economy. So, if the grading is excellent, it leads to low voids content. The sand particles in an aqueous suspension provide cohesion to the mix. However, excessive amount of sand require too much space to coat them and eventually will lead to expensive and more non-performing mixes. So this is a study on the impact on grading of concrete mix of grading on concrete performance. So there are two samples. Sample A with good gradation and sample B with a bad one. So considering the cement content is same, the flow of sample A because of its good gradation is better than in sample B. So the mixing water is also lesser, thus the compressive strength is higher than sample B. So sample B having aggregates that are too fine results in a more sticky concrete and needs more water. That's why its compressive strength is lower. The role of concrete in hardened state is that it provides volume stability through reduced shrinkage and lowered heat generation. This is because you have um, lesser paste in your concrete. The first aggregate also improves band with steel. And usually, aggregates that are more stable than cement paste and thus, it con the, and thus the concrete is more durable. So, another component of concrete is water. So the rule of thumb is if you can drink it, you can use it. However, water from recovered from concrete industry, underground water or surface and industrial wastewater can still be used. However, water tests should be done to fulfill the standard requirements. Sea and salt water are not good for reinforced concrete because it will be the reason that our reinforcement will corrode. However, if it's um, for plain concrete, you can use sea or salt water. And the sewage is shall not be used at all times. So in fresh concrete state, water provides the mobility to the fresh concrete mass. It is similar as the sand castle as sand castles. It imparts cohesion to but to the uh, only to the plastic range. The ratio between the water content to your cement content is called the water cement ratio. So in fresh state the more water, the more workable your concrete is. However, excessive water results also in loss of cohesion of the fresh concrete and promotes segregation of components. Um, 
this one, uh, in road road construction, so we know after after few hours after pouring, there's a thin layer of water that tends at um, that tends to cover the surface of the fresh concrete. So this thin layer of water is called the grid water. So it is good because it protects it from early drying out. However, excessive bleeding is often detrimental also to the quality. Water in hardened state, so at least part of it, 23% of the cement weight, reacts with the binder, allowing the concrete to set and harden. So water in excess of 0 0.5 water cement ratio results in capillary pores that impairs the strength and durability of concrete. So in fresh concrete, water is responsible for the workability. However, in hardened concrete, water is responsible to its strength development. So let's bear in mind that na kapag ka maraming water, maganda ang workability, pero ang magsasuffer naman is your strength. So the higher the water content, the higher the workability, but the lesser the strength. So it is important also to cure concrete. And isa sa gamit natin to cure is the water. So at early stage, the presence of water is in the course of hardening concrete is beneficial due to the continued hydration and volume stability. However, in mature concrete, since it is exposed in aggressive environment, uh, yung moisture is detrimental because it serves as the vehicle for most deleterious action. It is important also to account the water in the aggregates. Because in the stockpile, the maritime stockpile, the moisture of aggregates, particularly of sand, is not uniform. So most of the time, the bottom part is being wetter, while the uh, surface one tends to be drier. So in an open stockpile also, rain affects the moisture of sand and gravel. So this figure is showing the moisture condition of aggregates. So aggregates could be open dried, wherein there's no moisture and this is fully absorbent. Air dried, wherein it's dry outside, but it has interior moisture inside. And the saturated surface dry, wherein neither, it's neither absorbing water or contributing water to the mix. And we have the wet, wherein there are, um, it's uh, very, uh, it has more moisture. So ideally, we want our aggregates to be in saturated surface dry. However, most often our aggregates are in air dried or in wet condition. So if that's the condition, if that's the condition, the batch weights of the aggregates and water must be adjusted as a function of the current moisture of the aggregates. Because moisture variations, if not compensated, it constitutes the primary cost for the variability of concrete quality. So other component of concrete is the admixture. So admixture as defined by ACI as a material other than water, aggregates, hydraulic cement, and fiber reinforcement used as an ingredient of a cementitious mixture to modify its fresh, freshly mixed setting or hardened properties and that it is added to the batch before or during its mixing. So the role of admixtures in the fresh state are it decreases water content but increases workability, it reduces segregation, it reduces the rate of slump loss, it enhances the air content and retard and accelerate the setting time. For the hardened concrete, it improves strength and abrasion resistance, improved frost resistance, reduced permeability that results to higher durability, 
it reduces shrinkage cracks and also it produces colored and cellular coffee. These are the common types of admixtures in the market. So we have type A, the water reducer. So um, it will require the fresh concrete less water to achieve the same workability. So we have the type B, the set retarder. It delays the setting time and this is good for hot weather concrete. The type C is the accelerator. It accelerates the setting time and strength development. The type D, water reducer and set retarder. This is the combination of type A and type B. We also have the type F, the high range water reducer. This is an improved version of type A. And this is good for higher strength concrete. We also have the type G, high range water reducer and set retarder. This is the combination of I, B, and F. So why do problems in concrete occur? So before we answer that, let's take a look at the common design requirements. So for plastering, it is less than 5,000 PSI. For hollow blocks, it is less than 1,000 PSI. For the house, it's around 2,000 to 3,000 PSI. For the roads, it's 3,500 PSI. For the bridges, it's 6,000 PSI. And for the higher rise building, it's 7,000 to 10,000 PSI. However, there are already um, high rise buildings in Manila that is uh, until 12,000 PSI. So the common problems in concrete is the segregation and bleeding and cracks. So even being the number one construction material, concrete technology is often not mastered or simply taken for granted by producers. So let's take a look on what's really happening on site. So concrete technology is taken for granted. So many people abuse concrete very often by ignorance. Sabi nila, pag nahalo mo na daw at nahibugos mo, it's okay na. But actually, that's not okay because you still have to cure your concrete. And most workers at site uh, acquire their concrete knowledge through experience. So may nagsasabi dyan, 5 years of experience so sila, 10 years or 20 years. However, we don't know if that experience is um, experience of doing well or doing bad. However, it is still a 20 years of experience and mahirap nang itama yung mali na nakasanayan nila. So, concrete is still a low-tech low commodity product. So, it contains too much water, having a high water cement ratio and not enough admixtures and mineral components. So for too many people, concrete is still just a question of ESI. Whatever it takes to produce or place concrete at the end of the day, sa PSI pa din mauuwi yung usapan. So they, they, they take it for granted. So concrete technology is too simple also. So educated people tend to stay away, stay as far away as possible during placing and curing. So, leaving these two very important stages to the less educated worker. So, nasan si engineer? Well, si engineer, nandun siya sa puno or shaded area kasi mainit, sayang yung gluta niya. So, who are guilty of this? You can raise your hands, guys. Okay lang yan. I will not judge you because I can't see you. The other reason is that our concrete industry is fragmented into too many specialized activities. So, other team is doing the design and then there's the cement manufacturing, aggregate manufacturing, admixture manufacturing, and then the site, so mismo concrete, somebody is doing concrete production and transportation. Then another team, again, doing concrete placing and curing. So because of this, his specialists have lost contact with each other. 
So it is good also to have a fragmented and specialized approach because it will lead to uh, to produce a low cost commodity. However, it is no longer possess a global view of concrete technology. So the decisions made are more on technical and financial aspects without considering the durability of the final product. So basic concrete technology is still ignored in some parts of the country. So I personally, in my school back then, there is a limited discussion on concrete technology. So isa po ako dun sa mga nag-acquire ng knowledge, concrete knowledge through experience. Um, pero I'll see to it naman na it's an experience of doing concrete well. So in a broader outlook, there are a lot of um, concrete technologies and innovations that are uh, well developed. So especially in the first world countries. So it is um, no harm if we apply it here also in our country. So this is my last topic, the keys to producing quality concrete. So cement here is in red font because the first thing associated with quality of concrete is cement. This is because cement is the most expensive component of concrete. However, there are still other aspects or other factors that contribute to the quality of concrete. So we'll be discussing this one by one. So with the temperature, if concrete is too hot, most likely cracks will appear on the poured concrete. And for the mixed design, this mixed design should have the optimum cement content and optimum water cement ratio to have a good quality of concrete. The time of mixing and transporting concrete also affects its quality. So you are only given one to four hours if you are using at mix to transport the concrete to the project sites. Otherwise, it will begin to set inside the truck mixers and can no longer be cleaned out. So you have also to place and put concrete early in the morning or later in the afternoon, especially here in the Philippines because we have uh, hot weather concrete, hot weather. So we discourage concreting works during the hottest hours of the day because this may lead to fast setting and eventually cracking of the poured concrete. Our environment also affects the quality of concrete. If the ambient temperature is too hot, it can cause cracking also. So water in the mix escapes faster in hot weather. That's why curing is so important. Curing is an aid for continued hydration, thus helping in attaining the highest potential strength of your concrete. So if you don't cure properly the concrete, it may possibly lessen the strength results. Then, testing. Testing plays a vital role in concrete quality. So incorrect test methods and uncalibrated testing gadgets, equipments or materials will result also to false quality results. So all of these factors mentioned influence the concrete quality and this must be taken into account in the planning of our next design. So to have a good concrete also you have to have a good process control. So your process control should have all of these factors. So for the raw mats inspection, so you should have a pre-qualification of your raw materials upon delivery and have set um, several uh, testings in your raw materials. For example, for your cement, so your cement should come with a uh, mill certificate. Then there in your mill certificate, you will see the strength and other par parameters that your cement should um, should have. So in your uh, aggregates, yung aggregates dapat tinetest every mag-iiba ka ng aggregate sources or uh, at least twice in a year. Kung same pa din naman yung iyong source ng, ng aggregates. 
So the equipment and machines should have preventive maintenance. This is scheduled yearly or it depends on the manufacturer's recommendation. So you have to plan also for your transportation arrangement, especially if your space is limited. So you have to designate your entry points or your exit points. So good process control also includes good job control and coordination. So and it is important also to have proper compaction and jury. So something of concrete is also important. It will determine whether a given mixture will meet the requirements of a project. So the acceptance and payment of concrete depends on the results of the test. That's why the test should be done correctly. So for the fresh concrete, the tests um, done usually are the cement, a slump, air content, density or unit weight, temperature, setting time. And we have the compressive strength and textural strength for hardened concrete. So for the summary, basically concrete Quality depends on the aggregate quality, water quality, the use of the right cement, right structural design and specification, the right mix design, meaning you have the optimum cement content and the optimum water or cement ratio, the correct application, adequate curing, and correct quality test. So that's end my presentation. And thank you for listening and participating in our webinar. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to BinoyBuilders.ph to get the latest innovation on everything about construction.